Hi guys, this is Matthias, and this is going to be the first of a series of beginner's guides based on how I've been playing this game, and I'm putting this together to help new players get into Battlefield 1, starting off with Assault and Medic. Now I've realized from the comment section of my previous videos that most of you guys who are watching my videos regularly and who are subscribed to my channel, you probably already know everything that I'm going to bring up in this video, so I do apologize, but this video is not for you. So now the first thing that I want to talk about are the three basic and fundamental things that are key to success in Battlefield 1. Play the objective, play your class and stick to your squad. Battlefield 1 and the Battlefield franchise as a whole is a relatively strategical game for a first person shooter. And the way that the game mechanics in Battlefield 1 works is such that it will reward you quite heavily, even individually, by playing the game in a way that benefits your team. Now all classes, including vehicles, can capture and defend points, and it is very rewarding to do so. Now pay attention to the top center of your screen, where you see the different capture points. You will see whether or not your team or the enemy is holding a flag, and you'll also see if it's being captured at the moment. But what is more important is that your squad leader can mark one of these targets for your squad to either attack or defend. Now one of the things that probably takes a little while for a new player to understand when it comes to Battlefield 1 is what class to choose in what situation and why. The class that I've been playing so far in this video is the Assault class. This is a killing class. You cannot really do anything else for as long as you're playing this class but killing your enemies and destroying the enemy vehicles. Now in my experience, whenever you're moving over the map and you're going to attack a new point, this is the class that should lead the charge. But the specific and main role of the Assault class is to deal with the vehicles. And the thing that gives that away is the option you have for gadgets. Now my main choice of gadgets when it comes to the Assault class is the anti-tank grenades and the AT rocket gun. On top of that I also use the light anti-tank grenade in order to maximize the damage versus vehicles. This is what it can look like when you take out an armored vehicle. Oh there's a car. Oh that's the artillery truck, okay. Got it. Thank you. Yeah, oh, shit. Oh, it's born on me, it's born on me. Oh, sniped, really. I killed the tank also. Now vehicles can play a big role in the outcome of a match, and that means that it is of course very important to know how to counter them. So now one of the specific things about the AT rocket gun that you see me use here is that in order to shoot with it, you have to deploy its bipods. Now the obvious way to do so is of course to lay down and prone on the ground. But you can actually deploy the bipods while standing up if you have something in front of you that is of the right height. <laughs> I'm deploying my bipods on a on a crashed plane. What? I killed a light tank and got a double. That's a tank. Now the rocket of the AT rocket gun is a relatively slow moving projectile. Now what that means is that if you're shooting at a moving target past certain ranges, you're going to have to do something that is called leading. Hit it twice, dead, dead. Now what that means in this situation is that I'm putting my aim in front of the tank because by the time the rocket has traveled the distance to the target, the tank has also moved from the place it was when you fired your gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go, we're off the at the moment. Yeah, but uh, sh you should uh, show it. I should. Yeah, man. P uh, YouTube or it didn't happen. What should I do? Y YouTube, YouTube? YouTube or it didn't happen. Now, the medic class is probably the most self explanatory of the classes, and by default, you have access to this medical syringe, which will allow you to revive dead teammates. 
Now another default gadget you have is this bandage pouch that you see me throw time and time again. Now you can also as a medic unlock the large med kit but we never use it because the large med kit requires you to stand still in order for it to heal you. Now when you do that it will of course heal several people at the same time and there are many situations where this is of course better but for us and the way we play the game, being able to heal while moving takes priority. Now for the most part, as a medic you should not play as aggressive as the assault player. The ability to revive and to heal your teammates is very very valuable and even though the medic class has access to gadgets that doesn't have that function, you should probably wait until you are a little bit more experienced with the battlefield before you replace any of these abilities with a gadget that has another function. Now the weapons in this game are also class specific. The assault class that I was playing earlier have access to submachine guns and shotguns. The medic class has access to these semi-automatic rifles. And one of the things that is important to understand with whatever weapons you choose is that they have strengths and they have drawbacks. And you need to choose something that fits your style and that you're comfortable with. And what is also important to know is that most weapons comes with three different versions. Basically, it's specializations of the standard one. For example, if a medic weapon has the word sniper or marksman in its name, then that will tell you what this weapon is specialized for. Now with a lot of these weapons that comes in three different versions, the standard one is usually called factory, while the close quarter and hipfire version of the weapon mostly is called trench. Now if you're interested in more detailed information about any weapon, or if you just want to compare a few weapons with each other's, I suggest you to go to this website. It's simthic.com. Choose Battlefield 1 and step in. Now, if you click on the pistol icon that is above where it says weapon info, you can start comparing weapons with each other's. Let's click here on assault and let's choose Automatico M1918 Storm. Now, if you scroll down here, you will see the basic information about this weapon. Damage over distance, time to kill, bullets to kill, and accuracy plot. Further down you see the weapon's behavior in numbers. Now being that the automatic storm was our first weapon of choice, uh, this is going to end up in weapon slot number one. And you have up to five weapons that you can compare with one another's. And now I want to check out the trench version of the automatico, choosing this for slot two and click on compare. Now me, I've compared the Trench and the Storm version of the Automatico quite a bit. Overall, I've used the Storm the most, but recently I've started to appreciate the value of the Trench version more and more. Now there is a couple of different reasons for that, and one of them is that if you're tap firing and controlling the weapon the right way, this weapon is surprisingly accurate at rather long range. And yeah, long range is of course the wrong word, but you can kill people that are surprisingly far away from you for a close range weapon. Now another strong advantage of the trench version is because of the gas and the gas grenades. Now enemy gas will of course damage and kill you if you do not wear your gas mask. And while you're wearing your gas mask you cannot aim down sight anyway. And in these situations the trench version is always going to be a better choice than any other version of the same weapon. But the thing is that even friendly gas has a very negative effect aside from of course poor visibility. While being in gas, friendly or non-friendly, you will always be suppressed. And this is going to make your accuracy and your weapon handling really, really bad. But you won't receive any suppression if you're wearing the gas mask. Now the way the game is right now, the gas grenade is very, very popular. One of the reasons for that is because you get two of them rather than one if you choose any of the other grenades. Now this means that there are a lot of maps and a lot of areas on certain maps that is going to be filled with gas. And once you start recognizing this, perhaps and hopefully this is going to help you decide whether or not it's worth it to choose a trench version of whatever weapon you have rather than another version. See, I'm sure you can tell that the moment I was using the Helldriegel, my hipfire was not even close to as effective as with the trench version of the Automatico. Now there are several weapons for the medic class that also has a trench version. Me personally though, when I play the medic class, I'd rather shoot at the longer mid-range. Now just like with all classes, the medic class is not without its frustration. This for example, the guy thought probably thought that I would neglect to revive him because he didn't know that I was in combat and I had to finish that guy off before I could switch to the medical syringe. Here's more, here's more, here's more. Behind. Can you take? I have uh, this mess for you. Huh? 
I have the shield on and I, I barely see. see. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm just I'm just dropping whatever I am. You're, you're gonna pick it up. Ah okay, ah yeah. Yeah. Look So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will start working on part two as soon as I can. And there will be a few more examples related to this topic before the video ends. My name is Matthias, and I want to thank you all for watching. <laughs> that kill! <laughs> Maybe they're reviving each other's. Nah. <laughs> I killed them both, I saved C. Oh, where's the sweet gun? Red Lord got us just as you did. I'm going for A. Behind. Mati. Cavalry. Yeah. What is on the skill? Nice. Hey, I couldn't revive you because you were stabbed. Oh no, I skipped maybe. Oh, okay. I don't know if, if you get stabbed with a horse, uh, horse guy then. <laughs>